in 1971, one of the most legitimate and credible UFO sightings and experiences of that time was reported by the Johnson family in Delphus, Kansas on a family farm. 15-year-old Ronnie Johnson was out feeding his sheep when he heard a loud noise that sounded like a broken washing machine or a semi-truck driving over rumble tracks. When he left the shed to see what the sound was, he saw a hovering, flying craft shaped like a mushroom about 75 feet away from him. The craft was emitting a light so bright that Ronnie found himself temporarily paralyzed, unable to move. Sometime after, the craft took off, leaving a glowing circular mark on the ground where it was hovering over. When Ronnie's parents came out to inspect what he had reported to them, they too saw the object, now higher in the sky. They then went over to examine the glowing circle. Ronnie's mother touched it with her fingers and noticed an odd odor emitted from the soil. Soon after, a few of her fingers became permanently numb. As weeks, months, and years passed by, and more people heard about this circle left over in the soil from the UFO, more curiosity and investigation began to take place. The event eventually gained the attention of the scientific community where soil samples were taken and some very odd discoveries were made about the chemical structure of the soil and the residue left behind. Despite all the credible testimony and physical evidence, the case ended up being memory hold over the decades. With government disclosure appearing to slowly be brought forward to the public, I had started to wonder how the citizens of Delphos were feeling about this after all these years of outside skepticism. In May of 2022, seven days after the historical congressional hearings on UFOs, I decided to visit the small town of 300 people, hoping to capture their feelings of vindication. I had three goals in mind, to see the UFO site, to run some simple amateur experiments on any soil that still exists, and to meet the eyewitness, Ronnie Johnson, who has for the most part remained quiet about the experience since it happened. I ended up learning far more about the phenomenon than any book or article I had read on the subject. I arrived at the local museum in Delphos and was greeted by the museum curator, Dakota Davis, who has worked at the museum since he was 14 years old. The place ended up being one of my favorite small town museums I had ever visited and features some interesting details about their past, including a multi-decade long spiritual commune, which had a camp near Delphos in the late 1800s where seances and rituals were performed for many decades. A small section of the museum features the 1971 UFO event that includes photos, newspaper clippings, and even a soil sample left in a jar for the last 50 years. I'm Dakota Davis and I'm the curator at the Delphus Museum. And the UFO that Ronnie Johnson saw is probably the biggest thing that draws people to this area. And at least 20 people probably or more a year either call me, email me, or come to see the display for themselves. When I asked about the jar, Dakota casually mentioned that it was collected by his friend Bob, who lived down the street. When I asked if Bob would be willing to talk with me, Dakota called him on the phone, and Bob arrived five minutes later. Can you just tell me your name again? Bob Klein, K-L-E-I-N, from Delphus. And I've lived here all my life, except for the years I went to college and taught school. Okay. So, I'm a hometown boy. And tell me your memories, as much detail as you can think, just kind of in the order of when this all happened, when you first heard about the UFO incidents here in Delphus, and maybe the, you know, the aftermath, any... Yeah. Sure. Uh, I, we were not living here at this time. And uh, my in-laws lived here and we came home and my father-in-law 
said there'd been a UFO land out here. And I, yeah, right. Uh, I was as skeptical as everybody. Uh, and so we did not do anything the first week. And the second weekend we come home and uh, I talked to some of my friends and they said, well, yeah, you need to go out there and look at that. So I and my father-in-law went out there and uh, it was a misty, rainy night. In other words, where this site was, there was mud, greasy mud, not deep mud, anything like that, but the ground was wet. And uh, the site at that time was between a hedgerow and a, a chicken house or something there. And uh, I walked around the corner and it was dark. I walked around the corner of the chicken house and I looked and at first I thought, that's a stock tank sitting there. Why? I, I mean, it's all at once. Why is this stock tank there? And I looked again and I thought, that is glowing. It's a circle glowing. And the circle was probably, oh, eight foot in diameter or eight foot across. And the glowing part of the circle was about a foot wide. And I thought, now come on guys, something is not right here. And uh, Ronnie's dad, Durrell, he was the one showing us there. And uh, he said, yeah, come around here and look at this. Whatever this object was, had it came down or took off at an angle, and you could see on the trees where it had hit. Now, where it hit on green trees, that was dead, completely dried out. Some limbs well, right there. Yeah. Now bring here, this over. There's another photo too, isn't there? Right. This is what it looked like, wherever it had bumped. And uh, again, I'm still not convinced at this point. But he said, uh, here, look at this ground. And he had taken his knife and he dug into the ground and I'm holding my hand out. And he dug out uh, a sample and put it in my hand that dirt was powder dry. This is the sample here uh, of the dirt. So you probably cannot see it very well. But I said it's probably half a teaspoonful of dirt. That was powder dry. Now, I carried that in my hand for 45 minutes. And when we got back to where we were staying, I told my wife, I said, I need a baby food jar, empty. And so we got this one. I went like that, all that fell in there. Nothing was left in my hand. And I'd carried it for 45 minutes. And uh, I sealed it with wax. Now this, the wax has been broken because Another group came through here several years ago and wanted that sample to test. All right. There was a low pile of sticks. Oh, about like this on the ground light. Uh, if you were in Boy Scouts, you're going to attempt to start a fire. Mm -hmm. And they were all dead. And uh, I said, well, now where was Ronnie when he saw this? And he pointed probably, oh, 50 yards to the west. All right, Ronnie would not have noticed this because you haven't noticed the truck setting over at station, have you? Because nothing calls your attention to it. Ronnie was doing chores 
and he heard the noise and this object left. And uh, I cannot tell you whether it made a noise or not. I don't, I don't remember that. But I do know that uh, other people between Delphus and Bennington had seen this object go into the sky. So there, there was something there. Now, for 10 years after that, at least, I was a school teacher and I would bring my kids down every fall to look at this circle. It was still there. Uh, leaves would, the, the one foot circle was always clear and the leaves would be in the center and outside of it. Now, Durrell, Ronnie's dad told me, he said, a transistor radio, it will kill it dead in there. Well, I didn't have a transistor radio and I was not going to try it. But uh, for 10 years, I brought kids down to see this. I said, now, I don't know what was there. I'm not going to tell you to believe or not believe, but I said, something was there. Where did it come from? I don't know. I did not physically see it. And I said, uh, I don't know, but they did collect money because they had the best evidence for that year of a UFO. And I said, uh, Ronnie, I've talked to him several different times. And <clears throat> he has told me that at least three or four times a year, he gets phone calls on this. And he does not like to talk about it. And I told him, I said, well, I can understand that. But uh, that's about all I can tell you about it. You know, at the time, I'm sure one of the, I understand why Ronnie doesn't like to talk about it. You know, at the time, I'm sure there was a lot of skepticism coming his way. Exactly. Do you feel like over the last 10, I guess really even three, four years with the emergence of some of the disclosure from the government about what they know about these, that it brings some vindication to Delphus and Ronnie? I, I feel that it probably has. But again, I said, what it was, that's your decision, not mine. I said, there was something there that did not belong there. But uh, was it our government? Was it outer space? I don't know. This is your belief you have to determine. Uh, and I'm sure uh, giving the UFO studies that they have had, it's getting closer to the truth as to what it was. We have nothing that I have ever seen militarily that would operate this way. Uh, but I don't know everything either. But uh, 1972 is the time period we're talking about. And uh, I'm sure if there was a military application, we would know about it by now. But uh, I don't know. But yeah. I said, I, the disappointment that I had was I thought that should be fenced off and people should be able to come and look at it. But uh, that's not the way it is now. The only thing that is left there now is a tree, one tree that's grown up. And if you didn't know where that site was, you couldn't find it. He buried it uh, for the obvious reasons, but uh, I don't know. Now, the I've heard that the soil or what's left of that soil, whatever that is now, um, repels water that it's very yeah. repellent against water. Have you seen this happen before? Have you ever got to witness that? No, not since the night I was there. But see, now he's buried with 
uh, three, four feet of dirt. So right. I they, they did dig it up and they did test it. Well, mm -hmm. that I know. And it still was... Repels water. Repels water. This repels water. Would you be opposed to taking like one one hundredth of that out of there and just throwing a drop of water on it and just filming it and seeing what happens? Go for it. You don't mind? I don't mind. What about you, Dakota, as the I, curator? I personally don't. There's, the, there's quite a bit in there. Right. I've uh, taken a little bit of it out. We, we've already had people do it. Yeah. So. I said this was tested at a, a university, and they. I thought I'd probably never see it again. And I'll be darned about yeah, we, three we weeks. Somebody they gave it to, to you back. <laughs> it, yeah, we trusted someone enough to let them take it. Right. And, they and it uh, I said, uh, that's a science teacher coming out. Right. Uh, yeah, I kind of, I don't even want to take it out of here. I just want to like take a little bit out of this jar, put it on a surface and like sprinkle a little water on it. See what happens. Go for it. Okay. Yeah. I have another question uh, too. Sure. Um, I know Ronnie uh, is, see calls, I can imagine three or four calls a year. Do you think you would talk to me? I'm not going to speak for him. Yeah. You're on your own. Totally, <laughs> totally. I don't want to tell him. Okay, I should be able to just put a little drop of water. We took out a small sample, preparing to put a drop of water on it to see what would happen. Admittedly, this was not my best camera job. My bad, but you can see the water is initially repelled and that some of the material below the pile begins to spontaneously move. It appeared to be suspended in the water and was not mixing inside of it. We confirmed this by trying to mix the sample into the water. I returned a few days later with the idea to shoot it at 240 frames per second on my GoPro. The shot's not exactly clear, but it is interesting to watch it in slow motion. My first drop is a little to the right, but you can see the water being slightly repelled. My second drop hit the sample and the same effect we observed earlier happened again. The material floated and became suspended on top in the solution and did not mix into it. It was these effects, in addition to some interesting chemical structures of the soil, that led to a panel of scientists working for the National Enquirer to award the Johnson family $5,000 in a contest to see who could provide the most proof for UFOs. This brought even more attention to the Johnsons, and many researchers and scientists have visited the case over the decades. The Compelling Scientific Evidence for UFOs by Dr. Farrick is a book that was published on the Delphus UFO that includes a professional academic report detailing all the anomalies that were discovered in the soil, as well as Ronnie's experience and testimony shortly after this sighting. After viewing the site and witnessing the water being repelled, I had one last objective I wanted to accomplish. I wanted to talk to Ronnie Johnson. Hey everybody, I'm out here, just checked out the UFO site. Uh, not too far behind me, out here in Delphus, Kansas. Uh, the wheat is turning, will be harvested soon. I can't get this story out of my head. I really want to talk to Ronnie Johnson. I have some questions for him. I've heard from people here that he doesn't like to talk about it, that he really prefers not to talk about the subject anymore. I think he got made fun of as a child or as a kid, as a teenager when all of this happened. But I think I'm going to go knock on his door and I'm going to go see if he'd be willing to talk to me. I don't mean to bother the guy, but I have some questions. Whether he wants to talk to me or not, I don't know. I don't blame if he I don't blame him if he doesn't want to. So wish me luck. Let's see what happens.
Hey Ronnie, thanks for talking with me. Um, today I just wondering if you could share your story with me as much detail as you can from the uh, very beginning of your memories from that day uh, up until you know even today. If you just want to tell me your whole chronicle of what you can remember and how this story uh, manifested and how it's affected you, appreciate it. Okay. Well, <clears throat> the uh, 1971, I was 15 years old, and uh, we went swine. It was a Saturday, and uh, we went to Slina and come back. It was pretty late, but we had chores to do, and we had uh, my dad went out and did his chores first. And uh, he uh, got his done. I was watching TV, and I had a bunch of sheep out there. And I was going to go feed them. And went out there to feed them. And I had some ewes having lambs out there, too, in a shed. And I had a dog, Snowball. He was white. And... Uh, Anyway, I was going to go in the shed, and I heard a rumble, and it sounded like a big truck, a semi going down the road, how the tires or the washing machine I go out of balance. It sounded like that. I turned around and looked. And all I seen is a bright, kind of like a toadstool shape, and uh, I couldn't move. Dog couldn't move. Sheep couldn't move. It just kind of froze us. And uh, anyway, it it hovered there, and then it took off. And then we could move. The sheep jumped out of the fence. Jumped out of the fence and everything else. And and <clears throat> well, I'm getting ahead of myself, I guess. Mom, my mom called me for supper. And I answered her, and she said I didn't answer the second time. And from then, <clears throat> I don't know what happened or anything else. But anyway, uh, went ahead and uh, run the, in the house and told the folks, and they couldn't wouldn't believe me for a while. You know, thought you know, thir uh, 15 years old. You know, you kind of joke around that kind of stuff. And she finally looked at me, and she knew I was serious. And she, uh, so she, <clears throat> dad and her come out and looked where it landed. And it broke a couple of trees, limbs down, and a tree down. All, all about the size of that. <clears throat> about the size of, oh, uh, eight inch crawl, eight inch through around. <clears throat> anyway, um, uh, it made a circle, and it was kind of glowing. And there's a spot there on the west side of there. It it wasn't a full circle, and I couldn't I couldn't see no doors or anything when it's there, or windows. So it's just bright like a liquor welder or like the sun. That's how bright it was. And uh, and mom went <clears throat> go went to get the camera, and she didn't have no flash bulb or anything there, and she took several pictures of that, and the pictures come out kind of like a whole steam coming off the water like that, uh, and uh, it burnt the trees. That there's three trees there right close together, and I burnt them white like that dirt. And anyway, uh, uh, mom went down to test it with her le uh, her fingers, and her fingers turned numb. And uh, she rubbed her hand on, I mean, rubbed her fingers on her her, her leg. 
and it's still numb and that kind of stuff. And uh, anyway, all about oh, about a month later or something like that, and we went in for I guess I get ahead of myself. We went in town and told the a, a, a uh, oh uh, paper place, and they wouldn't you know wouldn't hardly believe us and. Dad said, "Won't you just come out and look?" And they wouldn't even do that. So, anyway, uh, uh, about oh three months later, uh, they uh, I don't know. It, word got around, and then the people uh, in uh, oh. Uh, Scientists and that kind of stuff come out and they had a guided counter it and three months later it went clear over there to red and it was radioactive and uh, so he took some took some dirt you know and that kind of stuff and <clears throat> my dad told him you better get some gloves on you know he did pay attention to that he went ahead and get it and Anyway, we was there. We went back to where he's at. And was working there <coughs> uh, on the farm. Anyway, we went back there and see what. He said, "You got any water?" So he washed your hand. Dad said, "That ain't gonna help because that stuff it just numbs your fingers and that kind of stuff." And he said, "I told you to put gloves on there before you ever touch the dirt." So he went back his heart, car and got one of them. Kind of looks like them gloves you you out of space gloves, you know. And he got most of the dirt what he needed, and it had everything in that dirt. And then he took some dirt away from there, and it's it was just regular dirt. I mean, and it it and they took and then they uh, sampled that, and it's just regular dirt. And this dirt, this white dirt. You can put it in the water and it float on top, and uh, wouldn't take any moisture up. And uh, this circle, uh, years past, you know, and it stayed there probably uh, I know seven years. But it's a funny thing when it's fall, it comes the 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 leaves fall off the trees and and it stayed there and then it kind of like a magnet it just fly right off of it and i don't know that it was a a sign there for the ufo stuff or not but it in the same way the when it snowed everything will melt except the circle and it melted last so <clears throat> and uh, it, uh, I had a uh, neighbor had some sheep, and I bought his sheep. And it was several years back uh, later, and and I uh, uh, had him in his pasture, and he had a crick on there, and and we had a real good rain, so I better. Check the fence in there. So I was going across creek there, and it was a creek, the fence was okay. And I went across creek in a big old circle, about the size of a football field. And I didn't say anything to nobody because I had too much, you know, people coming anyway. So I just kept that quiet. So and yeah, nobody knew that except me. So, but. Uh, when this when this uh, circle started uh, growing things on it, the first thing it grew to toadstools, and it was hard like a rock, and they was just like the ground. You touch them, your hands turn numb in 15 minutes. And uh, I had oh, it was probably three years. Maybe four years ago, I uh, 
had uh, a call from uh, California want to interview interview me this and and that kind of stuff and I said I want to find out what it is what it really is and they come up and interview me and uh, uh, they uh, had K State come down and they had brought a backhoe and I had dirt on there about two foot deep of dirt so I didn't want anything uh, before when it happened that the all the oh they told me I had to put a fence around there so I did put a fence around it so <clears throat> then I went ahead and covered it up two foot dirt so and uh, uh well, they come in there and and they dug a little bit and they couldn't find it and I told them to cut cut clear through it straight through. And they found it, but it was black dirt. Same thing. Didn't take no moisture up. It had the same chemicals in it as as the first thing, first time. And you know. Still, I I don't have the answers for it yet, but I know when it uh, when they come down there, the scientists come down, and they can't, had a a uh, oh Air Force a high rank Air Force come there, and he was from California, and you know. Uh, he told me, he said, there is, we don't have anything like this. He said, they're about 10 years ahead of us. And, and 10 years went by, you know, and they finally brought, uh, finally had a airplane well, come up and cover up and go up and take off 10 years later. And, uh, they, he told me, he said, you should, uh, he wanted me to go see what they had. And I wished I did then, but I didn't. And he said they had, you uh, they had saucers, two man saucers, but he said nothing like that. And it, uh, it's still today. I just wondered, you know, I know it's out of this world, and uh, and uh, they had one in England. What that these guys come up and interview me four years ago, just like this. But they had sheep around there. Some reason why they want have sheep landed by sheep, and one reason them sheep I had having lambs that that day in six months they was having lambs and it takes we had a a uh, uh, oh a, a veterinarian come up and and you know he told well he, we we showed him what we had and these these little lambs I mean they was about the size of the dang got a little puppy and uh, he said, I can't believe it. He said, it takes a year for they ever even come in. And they, uh, I know they were experimenting on them. And I know they were experimenting on hogs. We had hogs there. They steroid them hogs. We, we had to sell all of the hogs because they wouldn't have any pigs anymore. So... <clears throat> I thought it was, I thought it crashed what I thought it did, but I know it was experimenting on stuff. Did the sheep end up having offspring? Yeah, they, uh, they, they like I say, them ones that was, had them that day, they uh, had lambs when they were six months later.
Wow. Uh, right around six months. Well, uh, I can't even remember what how long it take now. I've been out of sheep business a long time, so yeah. Uh, it it just incredible how that is. After all this happened, um, the word obviously got out, and the seventies are a lot different than two thousand twenty. Yeah. What was the reaction from the community? Did people believe you? Did people not believe you? What kind of, um, you know, how did that affect you? I had some believe me, and I had a lot of them didn't believe me and made fun of me. I even quit school because I couldn't take it anymore. And he said, here come a UFO man, you know, in school and that kind of stuff. It just... If I had to do it all over, I wouldn't send nothing and go on and and, and it just changed my life when that happened. Is that why you didn't tell people about the other rings that you found? Right, right. Had you told people before today about those other rings? I told a couple people and, and they can't do anything about it now because they've been long time ago and uh, the one that the man that had the sheep and I bought from him and I told his his grandson about it you know and I never told told uh, the old man had him I mean never told him because I didn't want to get it out you know <clears throat> there there it go again you know I it changed my life a lot. And that's why I don't like to talk about it. I had nightmares about it. And I, uh, like I said, I would have it whole, and they had to do it all over. I wouldn't say nothing, nobody. And I know there's very, a lot of people did the same thing. I mean, kept it shut and and uh, there probably was 5,000 people there. You know, here, it might be more than that. It might have been 10,000 people come and see that. But now it's nothing there. You know, uh, the trees, they died off. That one tree left and it's about died off too, so. With, yeah. All the recent news coming out of Congress even now investigating this, you have um, very well-respected Air Force pilots and people in the intelligence agencies now coming forward and saying, this is real. We're not exactly sure what they are, but this is real, and it's not us. Do you feel vindicated? Do you feel like there's some type of um, redemption or vindication uh, after all these decades, you mentioned that you got made fun of, that you had to quit school because of it. Now that all this is coming out, how does that make you feel? It feels me a lot better, you know, on stuff like that. And I, you know, like I say, there's there's a lot of people seen them. A lot of people said they seen them, and I had a lot of a lot of a. Uh, letters and that kind of stuff and I had one a really bad letter I mean and it just you're nuts you know and and you, you need to be in a home you know and that kind of stuff and I didn't need that when I was 15 years old I didn't need none of that I didn't need them them people come up and, and question me they quest me over and over and over and over and over and see I was lying or not, you know. And my folks should have stopped it, you know, but they didn't. And Inquire paper come out. Now, I can't remember what year it is now. It's been so long. Anyway, it was a little bit after this happened. And they had a deal on there. The, be the best UFO get $5,000 in the 
if you can prove it out of this world, you get 50,000. That time is 50,000 worth, probably worth about half a million dollars. Now, you know, and the scientists proved, I mean, one of them, the one scientist didn't say, didn't think it was out of this world. And all the rest of them did. And uh, uh, folks got $5,000 out of it. I didn't get a dime. I think the Inquirer probably owes you some money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but, so you it sounds like you struggled with this for a long time uh but you seem seem like you've 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 got some peace is that accurate have you yeah. found some peace with it how did you learn to cope with this over the years um does it still ever bother you oh it, it don't give me nightmares no more and uh, you know uh the people come up and say i seen one you know that mean that gives me you know a you know, hope in my heart, you know, it, it just, you know, uh, other people it, it tell you nuts and all that stuff. It, I just let it go through ear at one out the other year, year so you, you have to do that or you go wacko. Have you had any other experiences since that day? Well, uh, it come back a little bit. Uh, it was probably, oh, let's see, three years later, four years later, it come back and it burned all the wiring on the house. My car wouldn't start. My brother was out there. My oldest brother was out there. His car wouldn't start either. And, uh, it, it sucks all the juice out of everything. Did you actually see the craft that time, or you just knew I, that? I heard it, but I didn't really see it. I don't know. I don't. My thinking that deal is it, it kind of, uh, oh, you can't see it. I mean, what do you call that? Uh, it's there, but you can't see it. You know, you hear it, but you can't see it. You know, uh, I think that's why you, there's there's a lot of UFOs out oh out there, but they they can uh, be visible. You know, uh, it. Uh, They uh, come up and put new lines on the. That time they didn't have them, them, them pick them trucks, you know, that raise you up and lower you. He had to walk on the. He had old deals on his feet to walk up on the, on the pole, and he come back down. He had a funny look. He said, "This is wouldn't be where the UFO landed, would it?" And Dad said, "Yeah." He said, I, I never did ever see this before. It burnt the wiring from the, from the house, I mean, from the pole to the house. And there's a lot of things that I don't know, you know. I want to know about it, but I still don't have the, you know, the full... That's why I had them come up and and cut through there and took samples again. If you had to guess. Because, you know, <clears throat> 1971, you know, and 2020, you know, it's a whole different ballgame. I mean, they know stuff more, but I don't know any more than what I did. They just can't get it all I mean you know what I'm saying yeah. <clears throat> it uh, it had all the stuff what it was for you know and but it turned black and I don't know 
why it turned black. Maybe I put the dirt on top of it. Why it turned black? I don't know. But it used is before it was like a crystal, and this the way it burnt the you know them twigs and that kind of stuff on the ground. It burnt them like a uh, mole, you know, like that. And uh, uh, it didn't have that when it black mold that kind of stuff it just it just dark black what it was when your mother touched it and you said that it caused like a paralysis in her fingers mm -hmm. um and then eventually her thigh right yeah uh how long did that last did that ever go away it never went away till she died it he had that same deal on her leg so Here's what the, the sheriff's department had going there. And that's you? Yep. That's my white dog. I think that uh, the Enquirer owes you some money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, they're still in business, I think. Right, they are. <laughs> Now, I never told you about the deal that got out of dog's nose. And this here was in his nose like that. Is that a piece of grain? Yeah, grass. Grass. And which end was in his nose? This here. Really? So this end was in and this end was sticking out? Yep. We kept, yeah, the dog kept on sneezing and sneezing and sneezing. Couldn't figure out. And the same veterinarian pulled this out. Oh, so that wasn't even hanging out. It was all the way lodged oh, yeah, up in yeah. there. Yep. And that was immediately afterwards? Yeah. Yep. Now here is a toadstool. And get it open. That's what started grow first. That was seven years after that. You can see a little bit of white in the or the uh, was in the ground. And it was only growing around the ring. Yep. Here's where the, where is that? See that there? And them toadstools are growing right in there. Uh, and right, uh, right over here, there was an open spot. And I think that was where the door was at, but I'm just guessing on that deal. And they told me to grow that, I mean, draw that, what it looks like. Here's what it looks like, right? Right around there. Here's the toadstools. See them? So the toadstools are sticking out there, and then yep. they, somebody just asked you to draw what the actual UFO yep. looked like. Yep. And this little area where it's pointing down, what was that part of the UFO? Is there something hanging from it? This right here was the, the engine. Entrance. So it was a saucer with an extended engine below it. Yeah, the engine's down here below. This is here. Very far about a two-man operation. It was ten. It was uh, eight feet across and about ten feet high. What it was. Any windows? I couldn't see it because it's so bright. You look at the welder. I mean, look at the sun. That's how bright it was. Any way you could judge color? Was it too bright? It was all 
all different kind of colors there, you know. It, uh, they ain't just one color of it. When you were in your kind of your paralysis, your when you were stuck, did you feel like you were being communicated with at all? I don't think so, but you know, you know, you know I don't know. I mean, when it was about, I guess half an hour between mom called me and that, what she told me, uh, what she told the, the um, uh, people. Uh, so I don't know what happened there. There where they took the dirt. And that was long ago, before K-State came, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is back in the 70s. Yeah. Some more toadstools. There's the dirt here. Then we got to put that fence around there. Right in there. These are some more of the mushrooms. Yeah, yep. What were some of the characteristics you were telling me about those? Um, Your hands turn numb, the same as the dirt. Seven years later. Yeah. And burnt that through there, through there. That's where that went. And uh, them things was uh, wouldn't take water either. The actual mushrooms mm -hmm. wouldn't repel water. They float up on top, just like dirt. I thought I had a picture of that dirt in the water, but that might have been gone. Here's the actually the first one mom took. You see the glow coming off of that? Yeah. This is the and, first one. That yeah. And she didn't have no flash bulb or anything. So. Let me just make sure I was on the wrong one. So this is the first one that your mom took right there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right there. Yeah. They had... I, we had some other ones a lot better than that. So, I mean, looks like it, like fog coming off of it, you know. Here, oh, that's the toast. She, me. There's a little bit. Picture of this deal there. Hand and dad the five thousand. Then he they owe you forty five thousand dollars more, right? <laughs> yeah. But plus inflation, we need to. It's probably more like four hundred ninety five thousand dollars <laughs> more. <laughs> Here's the panel here. All them is scientists. So you all did win. You got five. You won. You were. You got part of the award, but not the full because they couldn't prove that it was not out of this world. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Here's a guidance counter they brought. What's this? A guidance counter. I mean, radioactive. Mm -hmm. they, they went over a chart. It was, what, three months later when that happened. Do you think that dirt still would make people's numbs go, fingers go numbs? I don't years know. Later? I don't know. You got to ask K-State because they didn't want to mess with it. Yeah. I didn't mess with it. They never said that it was, did they test it for radioactivity at K-State? And they didn't say on that, so I don't know. I like to have all the the stuff on it and that kind of stuff but there's that tree they knocked down there's the there's the uh, uh, veterinarian and his wife from Glasgow 
a good vet there is. Thanks for showing me this. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. If you had to go with like your intuition, uh, you know, the, I guess the two things that it comes down to uh, when it comes to speculating what these are is this is either some breakaway human technology that's being kept under wraps or it's out of this world, it's alien. What would you say? What do you think? I think I think it was, uh, you know, we're on this earth and there's a lot more earth than this, you know. And it's like the, the, oh, the, uh, Colonel said, he said, you know, this ain't the only planet. Because there's millions and millions of stars up there and that kind of stuff. He said that it, it's not on this earth. He said, they're way ahead of everybody. And, and I think I don't think they hurt people, but I don't, you know, there's people gone, you know, you never you ever hear anything out of them, but, you know, they could have hurt me, and it could have hurt everything I, you know, there, because you couldn't move, and there isn't nothing there to freeze you like that around here. So you don't think you were frozen out of fear. Something f was causing you to f not be able to physically move. Right. Right. It wasn't fear. I was scared, but uh, when when I can see the sheep couldn't move, the dog was right by me, and you know, and I know he was left, and I know the sheep. After it took off, it they jumped the fence. And the next day, I had Snowball go get the sheep, and we had a board fence around there, and he hit the fence. And I had uh, welding burns several weeks of that. It just eyes hurt, and it it was. I think, like I say, I think they was uh, taking samples, these the sheep and the hogs, and that big UFO, it was, I think it would go right back at the, uh, the, but it went up, when the folks seen it, it was the size of a tub, and uh, uh, like I say, I like to know more about it and that kind of stuff. And I know it, uh, like I say, it changed my life a lot. Ronnie, my last question for you is just, you know, all those years being made fun of, all those years with skeptics, the writing, the writer, the person that wrote you the nasty letter. I mean, it's pretty clear that we're having some type of disclosure right now. What do you got to say to him? Well, I told him it was, you know, on UFOs. I mean, it um, different planets out there, and. And where he, we ain't the only one, you can, anybody know that, you know, and uh, it, I don't know why they picked that, but they did, so, you know, I lived with it, and all these years, I just wanted closure, but I ain't got a closure on it yet, so I probably never will, but, you know, 50 some years, you know, it uh, you can see a lot of things different. You can see, you know, like the 
colonel said that we got one, you know, we don't, you know, uh, saucers and that kind of stuff. And we said we don't have anything. It it take the engine and and then turn it and take off. And ten years later, we come up with one. But a colonel did tell you at one point that there, and sorry, I told you that was the last question, but <laughs> I'm curious. A colonel did tell you that they had some type of saucer that they were working on at one point? Well, he didn't say he was working on it. He said, I, we got saucers and that kind of stuff, two-man saucers and that. And I think they work on a lot of things and we don't know about. And, you know, uh, they're probably trying to make try to catch up what they are you know the <clears throat> uh, if if they if they was gonna hurt us they would hurt us a long time ago and, and we wouldn't have a chance I guarantee you on that do you think we're gonna find out the truth in your lifetime maybe maybe but I hope so. So it uh, the people that uh, I think the ones that scared, the ones that don't believe, because they don't want to believe. There are more people out there. Are more stuff out there better than us. I think that's what the deal is there. Ronnie, thanks for talking with me today. You're welcome. I really appreciate it. This entire story was incredible. I 100% believe Ronnie. He is not the type of person to lie about this kind of thing. It is clear that he actually took a lot of grief in his childhood as a result of all of this. He is not the type of person to seek attention, and he's made zero money from this outside of the $5,000 his family won in a contest years after the actual event took place. He appears to be a humble, hardworking, and very kind man that had a literal, out-of-this-world experience that he still does not completely understand today. It is my hope that the latest congressional hearings, as well as the eyewitness testimony from Air Force and commercial pilots, is bringing him the vindication he deserves after all these decades. The few people I talked to from the small community of Delphus believe the story as well. I think that within the next five years, we'll know what it was. I strongly believe that. Um, or there'll be another, you know, there's really, there's more evidence of it today. Um, they're finally releasing documents and I think it'll be solved one day. I, however, for me, it is solved. He saw a UFO that night, and no one could really tell me any differently. But I said, I do know there was something there. Uh, and it was something that I have not read about, have not heard about. And uh, in other words, it's not a hoax. Something was there. But you have to draw your own conclusion as to what it was and where it came from. Right. And uh, thanks for talking to me. Appreciate it. Not a problem. Thanks for watching Incredible History. I plan on making more episodes about historical oddities, the history of UFOs, ancient sites, and really anything I find interesting. If you enjoyed this show, please like consider subscribing, and share with someone you think might find this interesting. Until next time, take care.